The Mediterranean diet is proven time and again as one of the healthiest regimens known to man, even in recent studies. How does the ancient Greek version differ? Well, it has less ingredients to work with. Now, you may think that makes it worse, but I argue it only makes it simpler. So simple, in fact, that you can follow it with little to no cooking and ingredients you can find in your local supermarket. Don't believe me? To prove it, I'm going to take the top 5 countries that viewed the Olympian nutrition video, log into their biggest supermarket chains, and pick each item from their online store. And if they don't have the exact ingredients, I'll show you the equivalent that'll work just as well. Before I do so, a quick common sense disclaimer. Nutrition is beneficial, but it is not a substitute for proper medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, no matter what some quacks will say online. Carnivore diet will fix that. The what, sorry? First things first, let's make a single day's meal plan. I'll make it around 2000 calories, which is the FDA standard for daily consumption. I'll also make the macronutrient ratio a balanced 25, 45, 30. Mind you, I've chosen ingredients that I know I won't be able to find in supermarkets outside of Greece, so that that way I can show alternatives. But don't think you'll be needing to find substitutes every time. I just want to show that even in a worst case scenario, changing ingredients can be done simply and easily. Now, here's what I've made for the single day plan. We've got feta, calamara olives, honey, olive oil, and barley rusks for breakfast. Then millet, gigantes, or giant beans a mixed salad and shallow fried anchovies for lunch, pork skewers, fruit, walnuts, and Greek yogurt for dinner. On Patreon, where I make daily plans like this every week, I also list the calorie and macronutrient counts of each item so you can add, subtract, and replace according to your needs. The first country with the largest viewership is of course the US of A, so shout out to my American viewers. I've lived in the US for a number of years, so I know more or less the limitations of what you can and can't find in a typical supermarket. Of course, in the US, there are a ton of smaller shops and markets that import goods from all over the world, but I want to show that you can get more or less everything you need just from a typical supermarket. And I'll be choosing one in the Midwest, not in a coastal city, which I assume will have more imported goods. So let's go find the ingredients. Of course, I'm not here to advertise any supermarket chains or grocery store products, so you're going to see a lot of blurring. Starting off with the morning meal, the first ingredient is feta. Do not buy crumbled feta or feta that is not made in Greece. And I don't say that because of patriotism or nationalism, but because I've tried most of these and they are terrible. Proper feta is made in Greece with sheep and goat's milk, and thankfully in the market I'm looking in, there is one to buy. But if you can't find proper feta, replace it with ricotta or even cottage cheese. Then no trouble with the calamara olives. Next is honey. I had particular trouble finding proper honey in this store. The reason being that most don't disclose what the honey is sourced from. I also have a firm rule for both honey and olive oil which is, if it's in a plastic bottle, it is not worth buying. I looked for a single sourced honey like chestnut, oak, or thyme, and did find some, even from Greece, but the prices were truly outrageous. 17 to 30 plus, even $70 for 250 grams? Just to provide context, it costs around 12 to 15 euros a kilo here. So that's somewhere between 15 to $17 for four times this amount. Even this honey here, which is the mainstream run-of-the-mill brand in Greece. It's barely passable, surely not $40 a kilo worth. In the end, I went with a clover leaf honey in a glass jar that seems pretty decent for its price. I would, however, recommend investing in the best quality honey you can find, even if you have to shop around for it. Next is finding proper olive oil. It has to be pure extra virgin olive oil and again, not in a container that is plastic or where light can shine through. So in other words, you want a dark glass container. I was able to find a Greek olive oil at a decent price, so I went with that. Funny enough, I was also able to find barley rusks imported from Greece and a very popular brand. But again, the price is ridiculous. $30 for a kilo's worth is just way too much. Two of these packs cost $10 here. I tried to find a replacement in whole wheat bread, but I honestly found nothing I would recommend. 
Even the organic breads were supplemented with sugar, and most brands that had any sort of decent price were far too processed for what should just be a loaf of bread. And trust me, I searched for a while. Thankfully, I was able to find a decent alternative. Crisp breads. Know what's great about them? Not only do they go well with cheese, olives, and olive oil, but they are devoid of all of the unnecessary ingredients found in any other packaged bread. Millet was easier to find than I had anticipated, and there are plenty of options. There is also barley pearls and cracked wheat berries, so no trouble there. Yigandes were of course not to be found, but you have great northern beans and navy beans, so the substitutes are there. The prices on some dried beans seemed a bit expensive, but that just might be the online shop. There are of course canned beans as well, but I wouldn't recommend having those too often. I was also able to find flour, and particularly spilt flour, quite easily and at a decent price. However, I don't think you'll need it. The flour is meant to batter the fresh anchovies, and predictably, I couldn't find these either. There is a decent selection of frozen fish, and I ended up settling on mahi-mahi fillets. And in case you're wondering if ancient Greece had mahi-mahi fish, yeah, they did, since at least 1500 BC, the pork skewers could be made with pre-cut pork and bamboo skewers, and the salad of course was easy to find. This supermarket also had Greek yogurt from one of the most famous Greek brands, which is quite decent. But only the 0% fat variant, a bit disappointing. Like feta, you preferably want Greek yogurt from Greece, because otherwise, it's not that great. Grapes and walnuts were easy to find, but pomegranates, which are in season during the making of this video, not so much. $10 for 20 pomegranate seeds? Come on. I substituted it with blackberries, which are just as good. And that does it. All the ingredients you need from the most basic of basic grocery stores in a Midwestern city can easily be found. Now let's move on to the next country, the United Kingdom. I also lived in the UK for a while in order to study, so shoutouts to the viewers in the UK. You know, I still listen to British radio on weekday mornings, and I don't care what anyone says about your food, vintage cheddar and sausage rolls were top tier. Also, did you know that Pythias had visited Britain as early as the 4th century BCE? He recorded the first mention of the name Britain, which in Greek is Vretania, a transliteration of the Celtic term meaning people of forms. He also called the northeastern tip of Britain Orcades, the Orkney Islands, and found the people of Cornwall to be especially mannered and hospitable. So our history goes way back, and probably even far before Pythias, given the tin trade and green contact with other Celtic tribes. But back to today and to the shopping, which was unsurprisingly far easier than the US. I was able to find most ingredients with only a couple of exceptions. Instead of fresh anchovies, I went with whitefish fillets, which are again a healthy alternative and easy to make. Instead of barley rusks, I went with crisp breads, and instead of millet, I went with pearl barley. Dried beans were also somewhat difficult to find, but that's due to the online store. I know you can find them easily in person. I mean, you can even actually buy gigantes, readily made in a glass jar. But I wouldn't recommend them due to some of the overly processed ingredients. There is, however, a glass jar of white northern beans, which work just fine. Overall, a pretty easy and simple shopping experience, but the UK is much closer to Greece geographically, so it makes sense. Next country on the list is Canada. Now, I've never been to Canada, sorry about that, but what I do know is they've produced the greatest comedian of our time, so shout out to my Canadian viewers. Here I went with a different supermarket chain than the one in the US, which does exist in Canada, to see what I could find. And I was able to find most ingredients, albeit they seemed a bit expensive, like $7.5 feta. But then again with the exchange rate between Canadian and US dollars, it probably brings the price to about the same as the US. What I found particularly interesting is the blueberry and raspberry flora honey, which both sound amazing and I'd love to try. I was also able to find good Greek olive oil and the most recognizable brand of whole wheat rusks in Greece for a particularly good price, considering that they're imported. I went with great northern beans and a haddock fillet, as fresh anchovies were absent. Funny enough, I also found pork souvlaki and even chicken lamb and beef, but again, they are a bit processed. Of course, if you don't have them often and just need to cook them quickly without the hassle of preparation, they are a decent choice. Greek yogurt was tough to find and I had to settle for a subpar brand, but everything else like the fruit, nuts and veggies were readily available. 
fourth country on the list is Australia. Another one I've never been to, but I've always wanted to visit. Shoutouts to Australia. So with the help of some Aussies in the Discord server, I settled for one of the big supermarket chains of the duopoly I'm told you have. I found one of Greece's best brands for feta and calamara olives. I also found eucalyptus honey, which I really want to try, some local olive oil, buckwheat crisp breads, locally sourced millet, great northern beans, and barramundi fish fillets, which work just fine as a substitute for anchovies. Even found spelt flour to bread them in if you want to give them a shallow fry. Greek yogurt was quite meh, but you can't have it all. The only other ingredient I had to substitute was the pomegranate, and I did so again with blackberries. Last but not least, we have the only fellow EU country in the list. Germany. Another country where our history goes back millennia. Check out this Greek vase, found in a 5th century BCE tomb in Asberg, Germany. It was broken and fixed with gold foil, making it have both Greek and Celtic artistic elements. Amazing. Shout out to my German viewers. Like the UK, shopping in Germany was super easy. The only substitute I had to make were the barley rusk with crisp breads and the anchovies with breaded pollock fillets. These are easy to make, no unwanted ingredients, and the fish aren't minced, so it's a great substitute especially if you don't want to cook. Similarly, you can buy readily made pork skewers, but again, these do have some ingredients I wouldn't recommend having often, which is why I chose going for fresh pork cuts. Germany even had Greek yogurt with sheep's milk, which is the top tier. Everything else in the meal plan was found with minimal searching and the prices were all reasonable. So there you have it. No matter where you're from, at least in these five countries, you can definitely follow the Mediterranean diet to your heart's content. A healthy and simple regimen based off the ancient Greek doctors Hippocrates and Galen. Minimal cooking and easily available ingredients. On Patreon, I make daily plans like this every week. So in a month, you get four single day meal plans and a four day tetras workout routine for just $10. Not to mention a ton of other exclusive content. You'd also be helping me out in making both content for this channel and getting through the authorship process of an academic book I'm writing, so do consider subbing if you're interested. Now, did I miss your country? Would you be interested in a part 2? If so, what country would you like me to cover? Let me know below. Until next time, cheers.